Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where skincare is all about progression over perfection because perfection doesn't exist. Today, I just I just fancy being a bit of a dick today really and talking about products that I'm just sick of seeing all over social media. I think this comes in a time when mainly it's TikTok because I feel like TikTok has a tendency to overhype things and for people to quickly latch on to something that's going viral which is absolutely fine that's the way you kind of like play the social media game but sometimes it's just like oh my god this product is like everywhere like I can't escape this product and instead of like it going viral for you and making you want to buy it it makes you sick of seeing it and like you never want to see it again and the first product I want to talk about is that fucking rosemary hair oil is it rosemary like rosemary and mint hair oil and the name escapes me I'll put the exact product here listen these are just notes I'm reading off my phone <laughs> I haven't gone deep into this because really this is just pettiness and there's no deep thought behind it. I hear great things about this product and I've heard professional scientists, dermatologists say that it can actually be very, very beneficial for your scalp, your hair, the thickness of your hair when used pretty regularly, regularly. So I don't care if it works or not. I just don't want to see it every single time I open TikTok. And it's not that this product has been sponsored, but it kind of is in this roundabout secret TikTok sponsorship way. People selling it through TikTok talk shop and I've never interacted with these videos. I've never interacted. I've never liked them. I skip right past them. But all I see as I'm scrolling is that rosemary oil and people saying my one month journey, my three week journey, whatever with this rosemary oil. And I'm going to be honest with you. I don't see a lot of difference. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> questioning whether it works or not but they're showing befores and afters or they're not showing befores and afters at all and they're just pulling their hair back like this like look at my hairline now and it's like I don't know what it looked like before I don't know I don't interact with their videos so maybe I could see what it looked like before but the fact that I've never interacted with this post I don't watch it for longer than the split second of them pulling their hair back or a quote I'm like Scroll, do you know what I mean? Like I literally see it for maximum two seconds. The fact that it keeps popping up on my TikTok timeline is suspicious to me. It's suspicious. Like are TikTok shop pushing it because so many people are buying it that they're making money from it. Like TikTok are making a good amount of money from this. I don't know how it works. I don't know how TikTok shopping works, but it's annoying. It's really, really annoying. This is a product that's not only gone viral, but it's gone like super, super fucking viral and it's everywhere and I cannot escape it. And as I mentioned, I don't care if it works. I just don't want to see it again. I don't want to see it again. Maybe it's very useful for thickening hair. Great. But if I'm not interacting with it, if I'm not liking it, if I'm not deep delving into it, why do TikTok keep showing me it? I don't want to see it anymore. I'm so bored of seeing it. I actually blocked one of the people who like I see review it the most and I'm still getting posts. And I wonder if that's because TikTok do this thing where you can, a brand can take their videos and use them as an advert after the fact that they posted them. I've got a whole video coming up on TikTok sponsorships, by the way, <laughs> the dodgy advertising side of it. But um, yeah, I'm just, I'm sick to death. I don't want to see it anymore. On that note, high smile. So as I mentioned in a video a very, very long time ago about, um, what was it about? Dangerous TikTok hacks. We cannot get Crest whitening strips here in the UK. So those really good Crest whitening strips that all you Americans get are banned here in the UK because our limit of hydrogen peroxide through like retail, I guess you can say is 0.1%. So in the US over the counter products like Crest strips can contain up to 10% of hydrogen peroxide. I love Crest whitening strips. They're the only thing I've had professional teeth whitening here in the UK before which is usually between 6 and 10%. Um, and it's not been as good as Crest whitening strips. I've been using them for at least 10 years. The high smile whitening strips, in my opinion, and my personal experience aren't that good. They're just not that good. They're, they're not very good. They have that weird whitening pen as well. But the one product I'm sick to death of seeing is their V34 Color Corrector Serum. Now they say that this is a correcting serum. It's like a blue, kind of like, kind of works how like purple shampoo works for bleach blonde hair or gray hair. You know, it kind of takes away any kind of yellowness or green and just kind of makes it white. So they say it works to brighten teeth by utilizing color correcting technology, counterbalancing different hues in your teeth, utilizing color correcting technology, non-invasive brightening treatment, and highest concentration of V34 in our range. They say that V34 is purple. <laughs> purple oh, okay sorry it's so that's basically the purple and I've tried this before and to be honest with you it didn't really 
work. So my teeth are pretty white, but they're also like a little bit yellow at the top. I drink a lot of coffee, but through a straw, so they don't get that stained. But I still got that natural bit of yellow. You know, I think your teeth are meant to be like a light hay color and not like a white white, I, I think. I don't know, maybe I made that up. I think I made that up. Any normal person is gonna have some staining on their teeth. So what this did, I was hoping it would kind of like cancel out that yellowish bit at the top just for like events and seeing people and stuff. But it almost made my teeth gray like they look gray do what it looked like it looked like all my teeth had fallen out and i've had teeth stuck on because they were like a little bit weird like they weren't a natural color they looked very very odd and that's what i found with purple shampoo when i had my hair bleached um because my hair's so dark whilst it took the bleach really quick there was always a yellowy orangey tinge to my hair so we'd knock that out by using a purple toner and that would make my hair silver gray which is what i wanted and that's what i find this product does it makes my teeth gray like an unsettling gray you know and again i've not really seen influencers review this out of like just wanting to review it and out of curiosity it's always been a sponsored post which isn't a bad thing i do sponsor posts but like i've never seen somebody just take it upon themselves and be like i'm reviewing this i bought it i saw the ads and then the moment i realized that like the brand had sold a lot and got a lot of money is when kim kardashian started advertising it kim kardashian i can guarantee you doesn't have a single spot of discoloration on her teeth in order to want to use their purple mouth shampoo. I promise you, there is no way that that's a product that she uses in order to keep her teeth white. We know that, we know that. It's like her saying that a cream she uses is what gives her face all the filler and the Botox. Again, not a bad thing, I have filler and Botox, but we know she has professionals to help her do stuff like that. Again, not a bad thing, but when you claim to use a product to, that, and say it does a certain thing when we know you're using other things to do that, that bothers me, that strikes a chord with me. But this is another one of those brands. I don't know how TikTok works, but I'm always like, not interested, not interested, not interested, and I still get the adverts. It does my head in. I don't wanna fucking see it anymore. I tried it for myself. I don't like it. I don't want it. It makes my teeth gray. I don't believe these celebrities use it. Is it a bad product? No. Like if the, if you know, you're not, I don't know. If you're going to like a slightly darker event, like a dinner or something like that, use it, go ahead and use it. It does physically work, um, but it's just the gray that I couldn't get past. And the fact that, you know, it looked like I used white tack and made teeth out of it. And my teeth were that kind of like slightly Dark, like muddy white, it was very odd, very odd. I don't wanna see it again. Now this is me being very cynical because I did have some kind of like, not luck, but some kind of experience with those face silicone patches. I um, really enjoy them on my neckline, to be honest with you, but I just can't sleep in them. I, can I cannot sleep in them at all. But I'm bored of seeing these like patches, not pimple patches, but like anti-wrinkle patches. Because here's my envisioning, envisioning. I feel like a lot of people use them with success, but it's what people say about them that really irks me. They're not better than Botox and they're not a Botox alternative and they're not a filler alternative either. I get tagged in these videos and added and sent these videos a lot because people claim that they're a Botox alternative. And that that's one thing on TikTok that annoys me is like Botox in a bottle, blah, blah, blah. Nothing is gonna be better than Botox. If you want Botox results, get Botox. But I'm just bored of like seeing these patches and people claiming that they do all these things that they don't really do. What are those ones that, the ones I had really bad, the silicone patches, I can't sleep in them either. I cannot sleep in them. They stick kind of, but then you wake up and they're like flapping off your neck. So they don't really stay there. If you move, the slightest in your sleep, or if you're a side sleeper, or, you know, the what they say is the worst way to sleep, like, on your face with your body twisted around, which is exactly how I sleep, these aren't going to stay on your face, and they're really annoying, and they're best to wear overnight, but also, you're not meant to put them on top of moisturizer, because they can't stick. I want to moisturize before I go to bed. I want to, because I get certain ingredient benefits from my moisturizer that putting a patch over my, my face doesn't necessarily do. So I just feel like the more I think about it, and the more I did start using them, the less they kind of slipped naturally into my routine and usefully into my routine. And then I was like, I'm just going to get Botox again. <laughs> Like, I don't want to do, I don't want to do that anymore. I just want, I just got to get Botox. The worst ones for me were those, like, sticky ones. What are they called that look like bits of paper? They look like bits of brown paper that you stick on. And they kind of, and everyone's like, they work, they work. And I feel like they kind of do. In my experience, however, this was pre-Botox. Actually, I need to go again. But they leave almost, like, the sticky film on your skin. Almost, I don't explain it. Almost, like, um, 
I don't know, it was a very thin film. Then the moment you washed your face or the moment you had any kind of like um, motion in your face, your lines would come back. They would just come back. And I feel like all these layers do overnight is kind of like help temporarily puff out those fine lines. But then the moment you have any kind of expression in your face, they're back again. No matter how long I did it for, it was all the same story. I'm just bored of seeing this story that there are Botox alternatives. Because there aren't. Youth to the people cleanser. Sick to death of it. <laughs> oh my God, it feels like we're stuck in like <laughs> YouTube from three years ago. Now listen, <laughs> no, hang on. You know what, that sounds bad because I'm falling into this trap of having to move on and discover new products, right? If you find a product that works for you and you absolutely love it, use it. For example, the Glow Recipe Watermelon Ultra Fine Mist. I have loved this for years. I will continue to love it and continue to use it, you know? So if you have a product that works for you, continue to use it, but... <laughs> This is like, this is clearly my opinion. It's not that good. It's not as good as people make it out to be. I feel like it kind of built up this cult following um, because it looks nice. It's got a nice name. And it was one of those kind of like standout brands when people were kind of like trying to find different kind of gentle cleansers. But for me, it's so drying. It's so drying for friends and family that I've lent it to dried out their skin. Not one person I know in real life has really loved this product. And that's fine because all different skin types are all different, obviously. And other people's skin is going to love stuff that your skin doesn't. And that's how skin works, you know. But I just feel like this is one of those uh, products that went viral just because somebody used it, then someone else used it, then someone else used it. <laughs> and I don't think it's necessarily good. I don't know. I feel like there are much better cleansers out there. If you want that kind of like superfood kind of like take on things, Crave, Matcha Hemp Hydrating Cleanser, amazing, amazing cleanser. Naturium, they're like super greens or something cleanser. So, so good. Youth to the People cleanser just dried me out and it comes in glass. I don't like a glass bottle really. If I'm gonna have, use something in the shower, accidents waiting to happen, slippery. My personal opinion, I just don't think it's that good a cleanser worthy of going viral. <laughs> Honestly, I think it's just me being bitter because it seems to be everyone's staple cleanser, which is absolutely fine. I just had a really bad experience with it. I don't, I don't want to keep seeing it all the time. The Ordinary's Peeling Solution. We all went through a bad time with this. We all used it. Listen, I used to shit on The Ordinary a lot and I still, you know, stick to my words, but recently they've been coming out with some really nice products and I feel like they are heading towards a more gentler route in their um, life. <laughs> the Ordinary used to be all about those really high actives and you know, what else should I use? What else, what other percentage active ingredient, random ingredient do I need in my skincare rotation? We all went crazy and burnt our faces off. And then The Ordinary's Peeling Solution kind of had this revive viral moment on TikTok after YouTube, because people like dripping it down their face and it looked like blood. And then people were doing this challenge to see how long they can keep it on for before it really, really stung. People were derma rolling after it and really just pissing about this product and pissing me off. But then it's also kind of become like a staple on YouTube to people you as like a viral click thing. It, it's kind of like if you see it in a thumbnail, a lot of people tend to click on it and see about this product because a lot of people use it. And this is a product that if your skin can take those high percentages and if you read the instructions and use it properly, it's a great product and your skin can absolutely tolerate it. But unfortunately, just seeing this everywhere, it's always people just pissing about with it and then complaining about it after. Being like, this is what, this is what the ordinary peeling solution did to my skin. It's like, well, you put it on for an hour or you slept in it. You know what I mean? And that being said, you don't really need to exfoliate to this extent. You really don't at home. You know, you can go to a dermatologist or an esthetician and get a really nice peel, like an acid peel. This is a great affordable at home option for you to do, but I don't necessarily think it's for everyone. I don't think everyone needs to do it. I don't think everybody needs this crazy percentage of exfoliation. And I feel like this is one of those products where the virality of it kind of actually affected how people see this product because The Ordinary is a brand that a lot of people rightfully take quite seriously as making amazing skincare products. But then it takes just a bunch of like TikTokers to misuse the product and for people to look at this product and think, oh, that's like a gimmicky piece of crap, even though it's a really, really good product. I'm bored of seeing it because it's always been used in the wrong way and in an annoying way to to grab attention. Maybe I'll do something on the thumbnail to grab attention with it, like drip it down my face. I don't own it. <laughs> so there we go. There are some petty reasons that I'm sick to death of seeing some products. I just don't want to see them anymore. We get it. They're good or they're not good or they viral for some reason. I don't know. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it anymore. I'll, I'll stay on TikTok for a while. <laughs> Let me know your products that you don't want to see anymore. It could be as petty as you like.
in a petty mood today, leave it in the comments down below. You can watch some more product reviews here, some general light entertainment here, and I'll see you over there.